her one-year expedition to the International Space Station. I'm Dan Hewitt. You're joining us again inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in uh, Houston, Texas. But right now up in space, much more interestingly, uh, three new crew members about to open up the hatches and make their way into the International Space Station. Uh, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, the first ever one-year crew members, are joined by Gennady Padalka. All three currently inside their Soyuz craft, finishing up the leak checks out of their spacesuits, and getting ready to pop open the hatch between their Soyuz vehicle and the Poisk module, which they docked to successfully uh, just a little over an hour ago at 8.33 p.m. Central Time. One correction here, the current pressure is 741. Copy, 741. You'll hear some regular calls between them as they continue to work with uh, flight controllers in the Russian flight control room in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, who have been uh, working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the crew throughout their flight uh, to the International Space Station. That flight, of course, starting with a successful launch uh, from Baikonur back at 2.42 p.m. Central Time. A flawless flight to orbit, uh, the capsule separating from the Soyuz rocket, which carried it up into its initial orbit. A series of burns going by the book as they raised their uh, orbit and caught up with the International Space Station, eventually closing in again for that docking, which came at 8.33 p.m. Central Time, just five hours and 51 minutes after launch. Here, a couple of quick views uh, as that Soyuz closed in, moving at a snail-like pace of only one-tenth of a meter per second on the Poisk module, which is on the space-facing side uh, of the uh, Russian segment on board the International Space Station. That vehicle docking automatically via the Coors uh, system, which uh, has a series of antennas uh, which stick out of the top of the Soyuz craft that retract just uh, a couple of minutes beforehand, but guide the vehicle in. Uh, <laughs> again, for that docking uh, to the Poisk module. And again, inside that vehicle were Gennady Padalka and Mikhail Kornienko, two Russian cosmonauts, and Scott Kelly, the NASA astronaut, one of the most veteran crews to ever be flying up to the International Space Station, all three with uh, a good deal of spaceflight experience already on their resume. Uh, among them, Mikhail Kornienko, uh, one previous long-duration flight uh, already uh, in the books for him. Scott Kelly making his fourth flight uh, into space, a veteran of two shuttle missions and one long-duration flight. The most experienced among them and soon to most be the most experienced of all time, Gennady Padalka, making his fifth flight into space. Um, previously, uh, a three time expedition flyer on board the station, as well as one long duration flight on board the Mir space station. Two more minutes are down, two more minutes to go. We are but again, right now, the crew continuing to do uh, these leak checks. The, uh, the hatch is scheduled to be open at about 10 15 p.m. Central Time. Mikhail, what have you done with the crew uh, got a little bit ahead of the timeline with docking, so uh, we'll see if they're able to get the hatches open a little bit earlier. But once the hatches are open, they'll be able to come inside. They'll be able to talk to uh, family, friends, uh, program officials from both NASA and Roscosmos who are standing by uh, at the uh, Baikonur uh, Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Manual. Okay. The team here in Mission Control Houston uh, doing their part, uh, getting all of the station systems ready for this docking this evening. Uh, they're standing by uh, also to see those hatches open. The visiting vehicle officer here feeding regular updates on the Soyuz uh, craft throughout its uh, trip up towards the International Space Station. Uh, inside the room, Brian Smith, the flight director, uh, leading the team right now, and at the cap composition uh, will be Kathy Bolt. Do you need this, Mikhail? Out at the uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome, though, shortly after docking, a, uh, a news conference was held uh, at the Baikonur uh, Hotel, uh, shortly just across the street from the Cosmonaut Hotel with the astronauts stay. The new head of Roscosmos, Igor Komarov, was able to speak with NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, the two talking about the future of space exploration. This one-year crew, a big step in the right direction, getting us on the journey to Mars. Why don't we take a look now at that?
Our partnership goes all the way back to 1975 and the Apollo Soyuz test project. It's very important for all of us to recognize that and, and remember because that was a very difficult time for our nations. И это очень важно сейчас вспомнить и отметить это событие, потому что то время было исключительно трудным для наших стран, для наших взаимоотношений. And because of the dedication of people on on both teams, we were able to pull off a mission uh, that began this incredible partnership that continues to uh, to exist today. И, uh, собственно говоря, благодаря преданности работе, терпению и усилиям команд с обеих сторон мы смогли тогда сделать эту прекрасную программу и продвинуться и попасть на ту траекторию, на тот путь, где мы находимся сегодня в нашем сотрудничестве. Some of you know, I look around, most of you aren't old enough to remember or may not have been born. Если на ваши лица, я, конечно, понимаю, что вы не настолько стары, чтобы хорошо помнить об этом. But those of you who are old enough will remember that I was blessed uh, in 1994 to, to command um, STS-60, which was the first joint Russian-American shuttle mission. And that was the beginning of what was to be Shuttle Mir, a uh, program of a number of flights that went right on into construction of the International Space Station that we have today. So together our two agencies have witnessed the end of the Apollo era the beginning and end of the shuttle era, the beginning uh, of the space station era. And as Mr. Komarov said, we both believe it is very important for us to be partnered again as we enter the next era, which is the era of deep space exploration for humans. We are both very privileged to have the opportunity to lead uh, perhaps the two greatest space agencies in, in the history of the world, to be quite honest. And it is through the incredible efforts of the people with whom we work uh, that we continually demonstrate the ability of great nations to do great things when they come to a common goal as we have done and are doing now uh, embarking on the exploration of deep space. And this is Mission Control Houston. Then again, a look at uh, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden seated next to the new head of Roscosmos, uh, Igor Komarov, commenting on the importance of partnerships uh, between the two space agencies and between the two nations, as uh, we have done uh, not only since the days of Apollo Soyuz,
but all throughout the shuttle area and uh, has been the hallmark of the International Space Station program, uh, the uh, amazing cooperation not only between the U.S. and Russia, but all of the international partners. Um, a new chapter of that with the one-year crew, the two uh, one-year space flyers, one from America, one from Russia, participating in a, a variety of uh, research, uh, all of which being shared amongst uh, U.S. and Russian investigators, doing as much as possible to uh, further the cause for humanity. But again, the crew getting ready to hopefully open the hatches in the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, and once they do so, they'll be able to come out and uh, get their chance to talk to all of their friends and families who are back on the ground in Baikonur from where they just left. Standing by right now over in Baikonur, though, in Kazakhstan, is NASA Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius. Uh, so why don't we toss over to Rob real quick, get a view of uh, how things are going over there, and a quick update from him down there on the ground. Rob? Dan, we are in the Tsenki Hall across the street from the Cosmonaut Hotel here in the town of Baikonur, Kazakhstan, just hours after the launch of the one-year crew to the International Space Station. With me, former NASA astronaut Mark Kelly, the identical twin brother of Scott Kelly. Mark, nobody knows your brother better than you. He's about to enter his home for the next year. What do you think is going through his mind? Well, certainly as you enter through the top and you're coming down and you're used to living on planet Earth where everything's, you know, kind of one-dimensional almost, and you come into this new environment, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Imagine one of the things he's looking for is what has changed since he left, you know, several years ago. And going into the space station for the first time, you know, it's got a different smell, so your senses are kind of alive, and it's, uh, it's really an incredible experience, uh, you know, especially in their case, going from the small Soyuz to the big space station. You're part of the science, obviously, that's going to correlate with the science that Scott will be uh, developing and acquiring uh, over the course of this year. Uh, what do you think is going to be the most difficult, challenging, complicated part of spending 12 months in space? Well, you know, I think it's got to be the psychological aspect of it. I mean, to be in one place for that long of a period of time is a, is a challenge. You know, he's up for the challenge. He's thought about this for a long time, you know, how he's going to deal with it. But a year, you know, I got to give him a lot of credit for ta taking this challenge on. It's a considerable length of time. Before launch, we saw him suit up. He looked not only calm, cool, and collected, but rather taciturn. Uh, you know, again, you know him better than anybody. How do you think his mood is going to be over the course of this long duration mission? Well, you know, I talked to him a lot when he was in space last time. And, you know, a little bit of ups and downs, but generally pretty much level the whole time. And it'll be interesting to see if he can sustain that over a year. I'm pretty sure he can. Uh, you know, very mission focused. Uh, you know, this is a you know a hazardous thing to do. So, you know, you can't let your guard down. You got to focus on safety continuously and mission success. And I know he'll uh, he'll be doing that. Great. Thanks, Mark. Standing by for hatch opening here in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. Friends and family have gathered here. We're all looking forward to the next 12 months. Back to you, Dan, at Mission Control. And thanks again, Rob. And we'll be checking in with you and the friends and family in just a little while once we get these hatches open and these crew members on board. Should be coming in the next 15 minutes or so. Hatch opening scheduled for 10.15 uh, p.m. Central Time, 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And again, since docking to the uh, International Space Station, the, the three new uh, crew members uh, have been uh, conducting that series of leak checks, making sure they have a perfect seal between the Soyuz craft uh, and the uh, International Space Station. Copy. So can we expedite this procedure somehow? No, we cannot do it, unfortunately. All right. 
That's not bad. Are you ready to write it down? Yes. Great. It should be getting uh, some video back from the station cameras in about a minute or so. Right now, Russian cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov setting up a camera to hopefully give us some good views of uh, the hatch getting open and the new crew members coming on board. And that docking came at uh, 8.33 p.m. Central Time, five hours, 51 minutes after a launch from Baikonur. Veteran crew eager to get the doors open and begin their time. Uh, for two of them, 12 months on board the International Space Station, Scott Kelly, Mikhail Kornienko, the first one-year crew to fly on the orbital laboratory. Can we move here? Great. Mikhail, I have the same underwear. Yes, I agree. Wonderful. Let us wait again, and Mikhail, I think you should get dressed. We need to wait until 0605 to take another measurement. Yes, you can wipe your face. The crew are uh, doing a couple of housekeeping activities inside the craft as they uh, still are taking a couple of uh, pressure readings before uh, getting the hatches open. Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1 for the camcorder. Yes, go ahead. Sergey, can you see any image from MRM2 camcorder? Yes, we do see the picture. Mikhail, can you please give me our ODF commanders are ODF for contingencies. They are stowed in the container. Okay, we can do it later. Never mind. And as you heard, Anton Shkaplerov has a camera uh, ready and set up uh, inside of Poisk, pointed square at the hatchway, so we should get some uh, pretty good views of uh, the new crew members as they make their way out uh, into the International Space Station. And a quick view from that camcorder, you can see the hatch, this on the side of the station inside of Poisk. Hatches both on the station and the Soyuz will need to be open before the crew can come on board. So hopefully in the next 10 or 11 minutes or so should be seeing those hatches open and the uh, crew making their way in. Once they're on board, they'll be able to say hello to uh, the three current residents of the station that they'll be spending in, uh, the next several months with uh, NASA astronaut Terry Virts, Russian cosmonaut Anton Shkaplerov, and European astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy. Uh, 
Again, once they're on board and set up, they'll be able to say uh, hello to uh, their friends and family back in Baikonur. 20th minute. 0605, the pressure is 740.5. How copy? 740.5. And we have some information for you. Yes, go ahead. After OPM, you will have to deactivate all COM hardware inside the space vehicle per page 84. Page 84, you said? Yes, that's correct. Yes, I can see that page now. Page 84, all right, we will deactivate our COM assets. And after that, you will need to start performing the deactivation steps per page 85. Page 85, do not deactivate the gas analyzer. Where is that written? Which page? That is step 12 decimal 3. 12 decimal 3 on which page again? Stand by one. <coughs> oh, yes, I have found it. Page 96. We do not deactivate the gas analyzer. Yes, that is correct. You do not deactivate it. All right, so we skip step 12 decimal 3 in full. Yes, that is correct. All right, I have just written it down. And let us continue. And please swap the beds P1 and P3. All right, let me write it down. All right, beds P1, we should remove it and install P3. Yes, that is correct. P1 and P3. Copy. I understand, yes. And you should also move BMP 10 from MRM 2 to BO with two gas masks. Should we stow it in the BO? Yes, and you should take it from MRM 2. Stand by one. From MRM 1. So continuing to stand by for hatch opening, the crew working through a couple of final checklist items. The hatch is scheduled to open around 10.15 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so uh, in about seven minutes or so, we'll see if they are able to get them open on time. BMP 10, and you said three gas masks? There's still a, a live view inside. Not much going on yet, but uh, pretty soon uh, that hatch will swing open and three new crew members will be making their way into the International yeah. Space Station. We will do it. And which page were we before we started discussing these questions? Page 50. Page 50, copy. Breathe, Mikhail. I'm fine. Everything is good. No sense to fast, to be fast. We are in space. I cannot believe. Так, слава. 
25th minute, the pressure is 740 decimal 5. How copy? The pressure is stable. continuing to call out pressure readings a little more than an hour and a half since docking to the International Space Station. Once all these pressure checks are confirmed and complete, we'll be able to uh, begin opening the hatches on uh, the Soyuz and on the Poisk module. One second, Mikhail, how are you doing? I'm here waiting. So all the activities with your spacesuit are complete, yes. 30 minutes ago, they were complete. All right, so the crew successfully out of their Sokol launch and entry suits. In eight hours. Mikhail, can you please find my contingency RODF? I will try to find it. Considering we moved stuff around our vehicle, please check. Yes, everything is really hard to find. Mikhail, do we have any more juice left? I'm looking for juice. Mikhail, can you hear me? If you see any juices there, can you please pass some to me? And that's Soyuz Commander Gennady Padalka. Again, uh, one of the already one of the most experienced space flyers of all time, about to become the most experienced right. by the end of his flight. He'll be the new record holder for cumulative time in space. He's also going to become the first ever four-time commander of the International Space Station when he takes over during Expedition 44. He commanded this uh, Soyuz spacecraft, which carried the three into orbit. 740 decimal five. It will be 30 minutes in 15 seconds. This checkout is complete. And the pressure dropped by decimal five millimeters. I'm closing the Kakate valve. Copy. 
Sounds like the crew wrapping up some uh, pressure checks. Uh, can start performing step 10, decimal 9, decimal 3. Copy 10, decimal 9, decimal 3. Mikhail, can you please come back? We will start performing our calm activities. You'll be responsible for that. Open page 82. Are you ready? Yes. Open page 82, step 10, decimal 9, decimal 3. Stand by one, I'll try to find it. Yes, you will start performing that. You'll have to start performing that step. Page 82, that is correct. 10, 9, 3. Yes, I can see that step. What is the pressure in OPE? Stand by one. SKDS. SKDS. Three. OPE 746. ОБ, pressure one minute. Альтер, давление ОБ, мы вам сообщим чуть позже. And we will report the OB pressure a bit later. Copy. Moscow's station on Space Ground One for Anton. S. Five. Yes, Sergey, go ahead. Can you please check the pressure, the stack pressure for the MV? The stack pressure is 748. Copy 748. Okay, let us write down 748 millimeters. And let's wait for a minute. Copy. Okay, the minute is up. I will start performing the S6. Copy. How copy? Loud and clear. All right. You will perform this step when our crewmates open the hatch from the other side. Copy. How copy? Can you hear me? Station Moscow on space to ground one for Anton regarding hatch opening. Yes, go ahead. So we're getting closer and closer now to that hatch opening. You can see NASA astronaut Terry Virts here inside the poise module, poised and ready to uh, welcome uh, his three new crew members on board. Virts, the current commander of the International Space Station for Expedition 43. I have, I'm not dressed yet. I need some time to get dressed. What are you waiting for? Go and get dressed. All right, no rush. Take your time. I will prepare the tools to open the hatch in the meantime.
That's it, Mikhail. I got dressed, finally. Congratulations. Here inside Poise, you can see Anton Shkaplerov uh, preparing the hatch. All right, I have found it. The cap is here. The handle is here. Mikhail, we will find everything. No rush. Take your time. We will find everything. Slava, how are you doing? Anton is trying to open the hatch at the moment. Trying? Oh, yes, we can hear it now. Wonderful, he has opened the hatch already. And the hatch open on the side of Poisk. The hatch is open. You can continue performing your steps. Copy, Slava. We are opening Kagete now. Then we open the Kavade valve and equalize the pressure. Pretty soon Gennady Padalka will be popping open that Soyuz hatch. He, Kelly and Konyanka will be able to make their way into the International Space Station. The orbital module pressure is 748. Is that correct? So, use Commander Gennady Padaka should be opening the hatch any moment now. In working mode. All right, I think that's all. But everything is so slow. Did you copy that? Yes, I copied. The pressure is 785. Everything is happening very slowly. We are waiting for 748 millimeters. Waiting for pressures to equalize a little bit between the two before that hatch comes open. 
Still getting a look inside the poise module. You can see Terry Burtz in the middle there, the current expedition commander. Anton Schaplerov off to the right. Also already on board, ESA astronaut Samantha Crisferetti just behind the camera most likely. Behind that Soyuz hatch, Gennady Padalka, Mikhail Kornienko, and Scott Kelly. What is that noise? Close. P1. I told you to close. Oh, it's closed already. I understand. My bad. I thought Karade was open. All right. I understand now. Everything is nominal, as it should be. All right, our hatch is open. What is happening now? Yes, we need to wait because because our pressure currently is 770. We are waiting for 748. The pressure is dropping very, very slowly. Again, just waiting for the pressures between the two vehicles to equalize out before the hatch comes open. Seven hundred and sixty-five. Copy. Are you all beautiful and dressed up? Yes. Yes, we definitely dressed up. We had time for everything. We even shaved. So. We are beautiful. There are a lot of cameras here on the other side of the hatch. Big ones, small ones. And they will show us on the big screen there in the mission control. Anton just said that there are a lot of cameras there on the other side of the hatch. That is why I dressed up, I told you. I understand, Mikhail. 762. Anton, when will the conference start? In an hour? First of all, we will start the ceremony here, and after that we will move to the service module to begin the conference. So do you have an estimate when it will start? We need to ask Moscow about that. So, when you enter the station, you should greet everyone, and after that, you should proceed to the service module. Moscow station. Yes, go ahead, station. Sergey, when will we have the press conference? What time is it scheduled for? Honestly, we do not have the exact time when it should begin, right after they enter the station, but the duration is up to 45 minutes. You mean it will end at 45 minutes? Yes, because it will be the end of the KU band coverage. 20 minutes. So what's the duration? 20 minutes. I believe that we will be able to downlink the hatch opening to you during the KU band session. While we still have it, and after that, we will wait and do the press conference. Is that correct? Mikhail, please open the COM config RODF and you will need to deactivate all COM assets. 
поставлю и переходим в ОБ. Just like Slava said. Ну что, прямо сейчас что Yes, I've done that everything. Сейчас выровняется давление. So should I deactivate everything now? I'm ready. No, let's wait until the pressure is equalized. Right, I've removed the cap already. Here it is, KSD cap. The pressure is still equalizing. Why is it so slow? Just because. It is really slow. <coughs> so still waiting for those pressures to equalize. The hatches should be opening momentarily. Fidalka, Kornienko, and Kelly anxious to get inside their new home. Thanks. Seven hundred and fifty-one millimeters is the current pressure. So should we try to open the hatch? No. Seven hundred and forty-eight. We will wait. Slava, can you hear us? I close all the valves. Can you hear me? All right. Kokate valve is closed. Kabade valve is closed, and we remove the cap. We are trying to open the hatch now. Close, open. Please let us know if it will be hard to open the hatch. All right, we do have a handle here. I think we can open it. We are ready to ingress the station. Slava. Slava, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. We deactivate all COM assets for the RODF. Cop. Away from Anton, the hatch open away from Terry. 10.33 p.m. Central Time, the hatch is open between the Soyuz and the station. The crew and the one-year expedition about to move right on board. No, 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 no. Exactly right. Anton, stand by one. Mikhail, have you deactivated everything? Stand by one. Just switch it off. RTS. Exactly. So you can see the hatch cracked open there. Should be seen. Uh, so use Commander Padalka and uh, his crewmates, uh, Mikhail Kornienko and Scott Kelly, any moment now. Terry Verse and Anton Schaffler are off uh, inside of Poisk waiting for them. And there we are, you can see first one through Soyuz Commander Gennady Padalka, his fourth flight now to the International Space Station, fifth space flight.
Doc is set to become the first four-time commander and the all-time record holder for time in space. And there are the two one-year crew members, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, saying hello to their crewmates and hello to their home for the next 12 months in space. All crew members now aboard the International Space Station. So once they're done greeting each other, they'll be able to set up and uh, hopefully talk with their uh, friends and family very shortly, standing by in Baikonur. Moscow Station, Space to Ground 1. Go ahead, Anton. Sergey, we are in the service module now. The camera is on. Will you set everything up from the ground? All right, so, so we are here. Just make sure that everyone is there and Everyone is in the picture. Yes, we are doing that. Yes, we can see the picture from the service module. For some reason, do you see the MRM2 here? Oh. Right now, it's all good. I think everything is nominal. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready. Iconor, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station 4 voice check. Houston Station for a... Station, this is Rob Mebius with your friends and family in Baikonur. How do you hear me? There we had you uh, loud and clear Rob. We have a little bit of an echo, but but okay. Yeah, you're uh, barely readable now. Hello. Can you hear me up there? Who is that? Yes, I can hear someone. Daddy, hello. Just one second. Sofia, is that you? Yes. Hello, Dad. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 
Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Wonderful. So, see, it did not take us too long to get to the station. Yes, I can see you all. Is Pelagi right next to you? Yes, she's here. Is mom nearby? Yes. It's a bit unusual to see you up there. So are you still there at Vi on Baikonur? Yes, we are here. Everyone is here. Yes. I understand. Wonderful. Who else is there? We will fly back in the afternoon. I understand. All right. Uh, we'll give the floor to Mikhail and Scott. All right, Dad. Bye bye. Hello. Congratulations. On the successful launch, yes. Mikhail, yes, yes, I'm here. I can hear you very well. Yeah, you're coming in and out, but please continue saying, we can see you. Great job. How copy? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear you very well. The launch was wonderful. I would like to say thank you to all ground services, to everyone who is supporting you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let us continue our press conference. I'm sure that the family of Scott wants to talk to him. We don't have a lot of time here. Hi, Dad. the launch? I don't think you remember my last one. Hey, Sam, that was the launch. And I have just one reminder for you. Good company in a long Go. journey makes the way seem shorter. That's for you and also for your brother Misha. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's right. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be up here a long time, but uh, I couldn't be doing it with a better guy. Planet of good company here. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that's right. We love you. We love you. Yeah, I love you guys too. Yeah, I'm at the end of the line here. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Rockets, red glare. Yeah, I love you guys too. Hey, this is Mark. Yeah, big delay. Yeah, it was really impressive from the inside too. Is it uh, as better than you remember? MRM2 right into the service module, and it's, uh, it seems kind of the same. So, so far, so good. Nothing has changed much in four years.
You know, I, I think you guys walked out of that building about uh, 11 hours or so ago, and it's pretty incredible that in 11 hours you can walk out of a building and be where you are right now. It's pretty fascinating. Dan, still be awake. Congratulations. Misha, это Сергей. Михаил, this is Sergey. Желаю вам чтобы у вас все в штатном режиме проходило. I wish you good luck and hope everything will be nominal. Good luck. All the best to you. Say hi to everyone. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Papa, it's Yulia. Dad, this is Yulia. Yes, I can hear you. It was a beautiful lunch. It was a beautiful docking. I really hope you'll be able to get some rest and we wish you all the best up there. Thank you, daughter. Thank you so much. So you could see the launch very well. So despite the clouds, we love you very much. And please call us frequently. All right, will do. Thank you. Who is the next one? Girls. Hi, Dad. This is me again. I think we already said goodbye to each other. Is there somebody else there who is waiting for the telephone? I can ask Polina to talk to you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Good luck. We have a lot of work to do. All the best to everyone. Thank you. Mikhail, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you. All the best. Don't forget to get some rest, too. Don't work too much. <laughs> we will have to do some work after this press conference, and after that, we will eat something and we will start working again. I don't think we'll have a lot of time to rest, but please say hi to everyone, to our family. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And for the uh, crew on board, uh, And thanks very much, crew. We'll hand it back to Capcom at Mission Control and Mission. Yeah, thank you, guys. And uh, we apologize. It was a really bad echo. It's really hard for us to understand uh, what you're saying. Thank you, participants in Baikonur.
And so, <coughs> as you saw, the crew now aboard, Gennady Padalka, Mikhail Kornienko, and Scott Kelly, the newest crew members on board the International Space Station, two of them, Kelly and Kornienko, beginning a year in space, where they're gonna be doing a lot of research to continue preparing humanity for its journey to Mars as we look to send humans further and further for longer and longer durations out into space. Just to recap, the launch successfully taking place uh, earlier this afternoon at 2.42 p.m. Central Time from Baikonur. And then five hours, 51 minutes later, the Soyuz craft docking successfully at 8.33 p.m. Central. The hatches were opened at 10.33 p.m. Crew on board, six crew members now on board the International Space Station Expedition 43 back at full strength. Just one quick programming note for you. Uh, we'll be having our uh, post-launch all activities video file uh, that's going to be airing at midnight central time, 1 a.m. Eastern time. That'll have all of the highlights from docking and hatch opening that we just saw. Uh, so be sure if you're uh, staying up late tonight, be sure to check that out. and It'll uh, continue to play over the weekend. But uh, I want to thank you for joining us for our hatch opening coverage and for all of our coverage here today as we look at this historic milestone and the next step towards the journey to Mars. Very important time for uh, the International Space Station. For now, though, we will go ahead and sign off one final time for this evening. This is Mission Control Houston. Russia, but all of the international partners. Um, a new chapter of that with the one-year crew, the two uh, one-year space flyers, one from America, one from Russia, participating in a, a variety of uh, research, uh, all of which being shared amongst uh, U.S. and Russian investigators, doing as much as possible to uh, further the cause for humanity. But again, the crew getting ready to hopefully open the hatches in the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, and once they do so, they'll be able to come out and uh, get their chance to talk to all of their friends and families who are back on the ground at Baikonur from where they just left. Standing by right now over in Baikonur, though, in Kazakhstan, is NASA Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius. Uh, so why don't we toss over to Rob real quick, get a view of uh, how things are going over there, and a quick update from him down there on the ground. Rob? Dan, we are in the Tsenki Hall across the street from the Cosmonaut Hotel here in the town of Baikonur, Kazakhstan, just hours after the launch of the one-year crew to the International Space Station. With me, former NASA astronaut Mark Kelly, the identical twin brother of Scott Kelly. Mark, nobody knows your brother better than you. He's about to enter his home for the next year. What do you think is going through his mind? Well, certainly as you enter through the top and you're coming down and you're used to living on planet Earth where everything's, you know, kind of one-dimensional almost, and you come into this new environment, it's, it's pretty fascinating. Imagine one of the things he's looking for is what has changed since he left, you know, several years ago. And going into the space station for the first time, you know, it's got a different smell, so your senses are kind of alive, and it's, uh, it's really an incredible experience, uh, you know, especially in their case, going from the small Soyuz to the big space station. You're part of the science, obviously, that's going to correlate with the science that Scott will be uh, developing and acquiring uh, over the course of this year. Uh, what do you think is going to be the most difficult, challenging, complicated part of spending 12 months in space? Well, you know, I think it's got to be the psychological aspect of it. I mean, to be in one place for that long of a period of time is a, is a challenge. You know, he's up for the challenge. He's thought about You know, our partnership goes all the way back to 1975 and the Apollo Soyuz test project. It's very important for all of us to recognize that and, and remember because that was a very difficult time for our nations. And because of the dedication of people on, on both teams, we were able to pull off a mission uh, that began this incredible partnership that continues to, uh, to exist today.
И, собственно говоря, благодаря преданности работе, терпению и усилиям команд с обеих сторон мы смогли тогда сделать эту прекрасную программу и продвинуться, и попасть на ту траекторию, на тот путь, где мы находимся сегодня в нашем сотрудничестве. Я, конечно, понимаю, что вы не настолько стары, чтобы хорошо помнить об этом. But those of you who are old enough will remember that I was blessed uh, in 1994 to, to command um, STS-60, which was the first joint Russian-American shuttle mission. Uh, And that was the beginning of what was to be Shuttle Mir, a uh, program of a number of flights that went right on into construction of the International Space Station that we have today. So together our two agencies have witnessed the end of the Apollo era the beginning and end of the shuttle era, the beginning uh, of the space station era. And as Mr. Komarov said, we both believe it is very important for us to be partnered again as we ever one year expedition to the International Space Station. I'm Dan Hewitt. You're joining us again inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in uh, Houston, Texas. But right now, up in space, much more interestingly, uh, three new crew members about to open up the hatches and make their way into the International Space Station. Uh, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, the first ever one-year crew members, are joined by Gennady Padalka. All three currently inside their Soyuz craft, finishing up the leak checks out of their spacesuits, getting ready to pop open the hatch between their Soyuz vehicle and the Poisk module, which they docked to successfully uh, just a little over an hour ago at 8.33 p.m. Central Time. One correction here, the current pressure is 741 copies, 741. You'll hear some regular calls between them as they continue to work with uh, flight controllers in the Russian flight control room in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, who have been uh, working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the crew throughout their flight uh, to the International Space Station. A flight, of course, starting with a successful launch uh, from Baikonur back at 2.42 p.m. Central Time. A flawless flight to orbit, uh, the capsule separating from the Soyuz rocket, which carried it up into its initial orbit. A series of burns going by the book as they raised their uh, orbit and caught up with the International Space Station, eventually closing in again for that docking, which came at 8.33 p.m. Central Time, just five hours and 51 minutes after launch. Here a couple of quick views uh, as that Soyuz closed in, moving at a snail-like pace of only one-tenth of a meter per second on the Poisk module, which is on the space-facing side uh, of the uh, Russian segment on board the International Space Station. That vehicle docking automatically via the Coors uh, system, which uh, has a series of antennas uh, which stick out of the top of the Soyuz craft that retract just uh, a couple of minutes beforehand, but guide the vehicle in. Uh, <laughs> again, for that docking uh, to the Poisk module. And again, inside that vehicle were Gennady Padalka and Mikhail Kornienko, two Russian cosmonauts, and Scott Kelly, the NASA astronaut, one of the most veteran crews to ever be flying up to the International Space Station, all three with uh, a good deal of spaceflight experience already on their resume. Uh, among them, Mikhail Kornienko, uh, one previous long-duration flight uh, already uh, in the books for the inter the next era, which is the era of deep space exploration for humans. And 
по мере того, как мы переходим к следующей фазе, это освоение дальнего космоса, то, что мы называем exploration. We are both very privileged to have the opportunity to lead uh, perhaps the two greatest space agencies in, in the history of the world, to be quite honest. Ну, я хочу вам сказать, что нам обоим очень повезло. Мы имеем такую возможность возглавлять два крупнейших космических агентств, не побоюсь сказать, действительно крупнейших космических агентств в мире в двух крупнейших странах. And it is through the incredible efforts of the people with whom we work uh, that we continually demonstrate the ability of great nations to do great things when they come to a common goal as we have done and are doing now uh, embarking on the exploration of deep space. And this is Mission Control Houston. That again, a look at uh, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden seated next to the new head of Roscosmos, uh, Igor Komarov, commenting on the importance of partnerships uh, between the two space agencies, between the two nations, as uh, we have done uh, not only since the days of Apollo Soyuz, but all throughout the shuttle area, and uh, has been the hallmark of the International Space Station program. Uh, the uh, amazing cooperation not only between the U.S. and him. Scott Kelly making his fourth flight uh, into space, a veteran of two shuttle missions and one long duration flight. And the most experienced among them and soon to most be the most experienced of all time, Gennady Padalka making his fifth flight into space. Um, previously uh, a three time expedition flyer on board the station as well as one long duration flight on board the Mir space station. Two minutes are down, two more minutes to go. We are but again, right now, the crew continuing to do uh, these leak checks. Uh, the hatch is scheduled to be opened at about 10.15 p.m. Central Time. Mikhail, what have you done with... The crew uh, got a little bit ahead of the timeline with docking, so uh, we'll see if they're able to get the hatches open a little bit earlier. But once the hatches are open, they'll be able to come inside. They'll be able to talk to uh, family, friends, uh, program officials from both NASA and Roscosmos who are standing by uh, at the uh, Baikonur uh, Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Manual. Okay. The team here in Mission Control Houston uh, doing their part, uh, getting all of the station systems ready for this docking this evening. Uh, they're standing by uh, also to see those hatches open. The visiting vehicle officer here feeding regular updates on the Soyuz uh, craft throughout its uh, trip up towards the International Space Station. Uh, inside the room, Brian Smith, the flight director, uh, leading the team right now. And at the cap composition uh, will be Kathy Bolt. Do you need this, Mikhail? Out at the uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome, though, shortly after docking, a, uh, a news conference was held uh, at the Baikonur uh, Hotel, uh, shortly just across the street from the Cosmonaut Hotel with the astronauts stay. The new head of Roscosmos, Igor Komarov, was able to speak with NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, the two talking about the future of space exploration, this one-year crew, a big step in the right direction, getting us on the journey to Mars. Why don't we take a look now at that? 